Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. India and Egypt join hands to fight terror. Several injured as bomb blast derails passenger train in Pakistan. And to an explosion struck India's Jammu city. Let's begin the show. In a significant announcement made on January 25th during Egyptian President Abdel Fattah's visit to India, New Delhi and Cairo decided to strengthen their bilateral relations to the level of a strategic partnership. In their wide-ranging talks, the two leaders spent some time deliberating on the challenge of terrorism and pitched for concerted efforts to deal with it. Egypt has traditionally been one of India's most important trading partners in the African continent. The India-Egypt Bilateral Trade Agreement has been in operation since March 1978 and is based on the Most Favoured Nation Clause. India is keen to further expand ties with Egypt, a key player in the politics of both the Arab as well as Africa. In a significant announcement made on January 25, during Egyptian President Abdel Fattah's visit to India, New Delhi and Cairo decided to strengthen their bilateral relations to the level of a strategic partnership. In their wide-ranging talks, the two leaders spent some time deliberating on the challenge of terrorism and pitched for concerted efforts to deal with it. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said in a joint statement with his Egyptian counterpart that both countries had agreed on targeted action to eliminate terrorism and to share information and intelligence in the fight against terrorism. Bharat or Egypt दुनिया भर में हो रहे आतंकवाद के प्रसार से चिंतित हैं। हम एकमत हैं कि आतंकवाद मानवता के लिए सबसे गंभीर सुरक्षा खतरा है। दोनों देश इस बात पर भी सहमत हैं कि क्रॉस बॉर्डर टेररिज्म को समाप्त करने के लिए ठोस कार्रवाई आवश्यक है। और इसके लिए हम साथ मिलकर both leaders strongly condemn the use of terrorism by the country as a foreign policy instrument and call for zero tolerance of terrorism. They emphasized on joining hands in the larger international platforms to ensure that international communities come together to act against the challenge of terrorism in all of its forms and manifestations. India and Egypt have decided to increase cooperation to tackle the challenge of extremism and radicalization. بشرم الشيخ من نتائج مهمة خاصة ما يتعلق بإنشاء صندوق لتمويل الخسائر والأضرار المترتبة على التغيرات المناخية لا سيما في الدول النامية التي تعاني فيها البنية التحتية من الضعف وعدم القدرة على الصمود أمام آثار التغيرات المناخية. In today's globalized world, no country is immune to the threat of terrorism. Several countries in South Asia, including India, have been facing the challenge of terrorism. And over the past few years, there have been numerous acts of terror in the region. Many of these incidents are found to have complex international linkages and possible connections with the transnational organized crime. Terrorism is an evolving phenomenon, with terrorist organizations continuously changing their modus operandi thereby adding to the complexity and challenges faced by criminal justice practitioners. The global strategy needs to be implemented through concrete action. Let's move to Pakistan, where several people injured after a bomb blast derailed a passenger train in the southwestern Pakistani province of Balochistan. 
The bomb exploded as the Jafar Express passenger train was passing through the district more than 150 kilometers from the provincial capital, Quetta. Take a look. Even as it battles a severe economic crisis, Pakistan is facing almost daily attacks in different parts of the country. At least 15 people were injured when a bomb blast derailed a passenger train in the southwestern Pakistani province of Balochistan on January 20th. The attack, which was claimed by the Baloch Liberation Army, a regional separatist group, derailed eight carriages, including the locomotive. The Balochistan conflict has a long, complex history, but since the time the region caught China's eye, conflict has intensified. Baloch nationalists forming many groups have been fighting the state to oppose curbs on civil rights and the China-Pakistan economic corridor projects that they say deprive Balochs of natural resources while giving few jobs. China is acting like foe of Baloch people by collaborating with Pakistan, the enemy of the Baloch nation. Islamabad and Beijing jointly want to strengthen Punjabi colonization over Balochistan for their expansionist evil designs and economic benefits. This year we would carry on the momentum of uh, very high level exchanges, our strategic communication and practical cooperation. We expect a very notable progress on key projects of CPAC like ML1, Karachi Sadkural Railway. Uh, we have agreed to take new measures to expand bilateral trade. We will be focusing on three very important aspects which is industrialization, the IT field and agriculture in terms of cultural exchanges. 2023 has been declared as year of tourism exchanges between our two countries. So a number of events in both our countries are going to take place to, to promote our touristic size, to promote our culture and diversity. Balochistan remains as an impoverished and neglected province. Pakistani army has strong control over the lives of people in Balochistan. Baloch people are being deprived of every basic right and are being tortured by security agencies. Harassment, killing, enforced disappearances and torture by Pakistani security forces have put Baloch people in such a situation that even the educated women are resorting to a unique form of protest including a suicide bombing. The immediate step of the world community should be to pass a resolution in UN Security Council requiring Pakistan to allow UN observers in Balochistan and complete pause on military operations. The UN must force Pakistan to allow international media access to Balochistan and ensure free and fair reporting. Unless the global community as a whole comes forward to defend and protect the collective notions of humanity, the genocide of Baloch people will continue. Just days ahead of Republic Day, two mysterious blasts occurred in Narwal area of Shamu city. According to officials, the first explosion occurred in a car that had been taken to a shop for repairs. And 15 minutes later, another explosion occurred only 50 meters away, leaving the area littered with wrecked objects and debris. Sources claim Park back terror group Lashkar e Taiba is involved behind the twin bomb blast. Airport. On January 21st, two high intensity explosions took place within the span of 15 minutes in Jammu city, in India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. A total of nine people suffered injuries in the twin explosions. According to Jammu and Kashmir police report, the blasts were caused by IED bombs. The blast in the transport yard of Narwal were triggered by the suspected terrorists at a time when security forces in the region are on high alert for the upcoming Republic Day celebration. As per officials, the first blast took place in a vehicle that was sent to workshop for repairs and then 15 minutes later, another blast occurred just 50 meters away 
which littered the area with damaged parts and trash. दुख की बात है कि जो ब्लास्ट हुआ है जहाँ पे इतने लोग बड़े सीरियस इंजर्ड भी हैं कुछ उनका भी टोटल इंजर्ड है सात लोगों का सुना है मैंने इनसे जो उन्होंने बताया मुझे कि सात लोग इंजर्ड हैं उनमें से कुछ हालत कुछ की हालत बड़ी गंभीर है जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज ऑन हाई अलर्ट एवर सेंस द टू एक्सप्लोजन है ग्रुप लश्कर तैयबा इज इन्वॉल्व बिहाइंड द ट्विन बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट According to intelligence sources Pakistan is changing its strategy sources say Pak back terror groups have shifted focus from Kashmir valley now to Jammu region Early this month two cousins aged 4 and 16 were killed when an improvised explosive device went off in Dangri village in Jammu's Rajouri area 14 hours after terrorists had shot dead four people there Furthermore, Pakistan-based terror groups have reactivated four launch pads, and that the Pakistan Rangers are aiding these terrorists to conduct attacks. While Jammu and Kashmir attempts to return to normalcy, Pakistan ramps up its efforts to cause havoc in the region. The country has always attempted, with varying degrees of intensity, to destabilize India, undermine its unity, and subvert its integrity. and this strategy is unlikely to change the indian security forces on the other hand are fully committed to bringing peace to the kashmir valley recently there have been numerous operations across jammu and kashmir that have resulted in the elimination of several terrorists many of whom were foreign nationals from disrupting afghan women's right to education to restricting their movement without a male relative the taliban has more or less shackled the freedom of women in a recent shocking revelation textile shops in afghanistan have been asked by the authorities to cover the faces of female mannequins pictures circulating on the internet showcase the mannequins dressed in a beautiful gowns with faces covered with polythene bags scarves and even aluminum foil take a look This is how storefronts look like in Afghanistan under Taliban regime. Shop owners have been compelled to use polythene bags, scarves, and even foil to cover the faces of mannequins. Initially, when the Taliban seized power in August 2021, they wanted the mannequins to be beheaded, calling it a violation of Sharia law. However, shopkeepers refused to do so, saying that it will hurt their business. This led to the Taliban changing their orders. Since then, shop owners have been covering mannequins' faces with cloth sacks. According to experts, this decree by the Taliban is a strategic push towards completely eradicating women from public life. The Taliban's extremism shows that they never changed at all. That it was simply a cover, a PR for a bad policy. of NATO withdrawal from Afghanistan the Taliban uh, have shown that they are still willing to harbor international terrorism they are still willing to harbor groups such as al qaeda in the middle of kabul in their own safe houses so the international community i think are realizing that the Taliban did not change that the Taliban poses a severe threat to the global community and i think in the coming months the international community will be doing a lot more to take on the Taliban The Taliban claimed under its rule this time women would be accorded every right within the confines of Sharia law However in the months that have followed the de facto rulers have imposed harsh restrictions on women's education and their access to employment In March 2022 The Taliban broke their promise to reopen secondary schools for girls. Two months later, women were forced to veil their faces as well as their hair. In September 2022, Women's Affairs Ministry was disbanded, and only last month, the Taliban regime banned university education for girls in the country and also banned Afghan women from working for NGOs. 
is on the ground, but obviously they will be engaging uh, with the de facto authorities uh, with the same message uh, that we've been delivering uh, since since the beginning on, on the need to to roll back uh, the policies that were put in place and to underscore the message that um, humanitarian aid cannot be delivered without women, right? And it's it's uh, it's just not it's it's not ethical to do it without it, and it is not operationally feasible to do it uh, without women's active participation. The Taliban regime has failed to earn recognition from any UN member state because of their rigid and intransigent mode of governance, their inability to transform their mindset on issues such as women freedom. Taliban government should understand that a country can't survive in the 21st century by pursuing a retrogressive and ultra-conservative approach. The eventual outcome of suppressing the freedom and creativity of women will be the erosion of the Afghan society. Banning women's movements, curtailing all their freedom, health and education will augment frustration and anger among the Afghan women. In turn, the wrong message will be delivered to the world that the Afghan people are socially backward and can never live a normal life. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.